Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about quantitative finance curriculums and more or less the worries, the concerns I see behind the scenes with a lot of these programs and a lot of the failures, um, I think, on behalf of many of these quantitative finance programs here. So let's just start off with here with defining quantitative finance programs here. I'm talking master's programs. Uh, I'm talking quantitative finance, which covers everything under the sun from computational finance, mathematical finance, financial engineering, um, any other sort of combination of quantitative finance, risk management, and all those other buzzwords of computation and numerical and all that stuff. Uh, those are all really the same thing. They've all blended together. They've all whitewashed each other into just meaning quantitative finance. So at a whole level here, what is quantitative finance? And let's talk about this from a definitional level because I think many of the master's programs have fallen off the bandwagon and there are concerns from them, but they don't realize what's driving this. So as I've talked to different programs, one of the key major concerns is that they are now competing with master students um, from other venues for quantitative finance. Shocking to me, there was a mention of business analytics programs like masters, um, and then of course, data science, machine learning, um, statistics majors, all coming in here and taking out pieces of quantitative finance masters, kind of real estate on where they're placing students. So the programs are educating these students, they're placing them in these jobs. And now all of a sudden, many of those jobs are being filled by all these other, you know, masters programs, essentially, and their kind of real estate's going away here. So one of the problems is there are way too many quantitative finance masters in general. Every school under the sun now is just opening new programs because they think it's a money-making venture. If you're a new program, uh, I will put money on this. You will make some money, but you will probably just tarnish your name as a school and university because most people won't hire from you. Um, it's very, very, very challenging to get a good quantitative finance master's. And I think that's kind of where a lot of schools are failing here. Uh, the second part here is that most quantitative finance masters here are archaic and are stuck historically in the past. So the term financial engineering has an actual meaning. So financial engineers engineer financial products. Uh, and this typically comes in the form of derivative pricing and derivative products here. So think like options, for example. Uh, most of these quantitative finance programs have now gone back historically to where quantitative finance really kind of was born out of, um, which was the realm of like the Black Scholes Merton paper on option pricing. And this sparked a lot of interest in applications of like physics, you know, theorems, for example, um, and different methods that the physicists were using into quantitative finance. And these programs have evolved over time. And now everybody is grasping desperately uh, to teaching option pricing theory. And I have absolutely no understanding of why. Like, I get it. I get that little tiny bit of like, I get it. It's a historical piece here. Um, stochastic processes tied into option pricing, doing discrete time, continuous time. Yes, it was pure hell of a class to take. It was very rigorous. It gives you a very, very different in-depth insight into option pricing. And it makes you look at finance very differently. However, I think most programs are wasting their time teaching it because one, they don't have the title of financial engineering masters. And two, there are not very many jobs available in that space. So realize if you're teaching that high math rigorous skill only for financial engineering, uh, your students are going to be unemployed, like the majority of them. There really aren't that many jobs available let me construct that backwards a little bit for you here. Uh, financial engineers who are actual financial engineers, I would say are on the sell side because they are engineering financial products, typically exotics, and selling them into the buy side. Uh, all the people that touch derivative products, for example, that buy them and sell them and they're really excited and they're probably on the buy side, they don't have a dog in the fight, meaning they don't have skin in the game. They aren't going to lose tons of money or have some sort of legal issue if these options or derivative contracts and products don't perform kind of as expected. So it's a little more complicated to engineer these from the ground up and actually sell them. Um, those that are just using them, so for an example here, they teach it in corporate finance or finance or MBA programs, uh, you're just learning how to use them. Like, oh, I need to hedge this risk. I bought this financial product and it does this sort of hedge. So that's really simple. Um, but most programs I think are just stuck on that piece here. And then a few other master's programs I talked to, 
have mentioned now that the machine learning space is booming. They want to come in and add a ton of machine learning courses. They're competing with machine learning master's programs. And my concern is, is where's the tipping point? Like just doing machine learning for finance is no different than doing machine learning. And now you're competing with not quantitative finance masters, but you'll be competing with uh, machine learning masters. So let me dive in here just to give an example. These are the courses I think I would create if I had a program. Um, you'll notice many of these titles don't exist in universities because, of course, they're not practitioners and they don't understand how practitioners think. Um, but this set of skills here, so this is going to be a one and a half year program, which is what the common is. I know I like two year programs. Um, but if you take three courses per semester, um, this, these are the classes I would actually take and recommend if they existed. They do not exist in most schools. Uh, but first off would be sampling theory and distributions. Uh, again, I don't see a lot of students coming out of these quant finance masters that have really strong fundamental understanding uh, of sampling theory and like research and why the data is how the data is and, you know, biases and issues with sampling these sorts of things. Um, you'll see too, this ties into stochastic processes and time series later, um, but all those distributions and making parametrics and non-parametric distributions and making Frankenstein distributions as well, where you can fit more or less uh, parametric tells to a non-parametric core. Um, you could view these as, I guess, numerical methods in some sense, but these are the things that should be taught in a course such as sampling theory and distributions. Uh, the second course I would teach is inferential statistics. I do not see enough common sense. I do not see enough depth in inferential statistics from students that graduate and come to work for me or students that I work with or students that I interview or resumes that I review. Um, inferential statistics at a mastery level. Do not teach the nonsensical garbage undergrad material. Your students that are coming to these master's programs should have a very sharp mind, a very deep skill set in math, stats, and probability theory coming into this. Um, but I see a ton of mistakes and people just not understanding basic like linear regression, for example. Um, I know there's a whole war on linearity and oh, there's nonlinear models. And yes, you can do inferential statistics on nonlinear models. Um, but there should be a whole course on inferential statistics for quants. Again, all these classes should be applied to quantitative finance in the finance industry. Uh, the third class is going to be time series. So this should just be your core basic time series. Um, again, this class should tie into your inferential statistics class. It should tie back into your uh, sampling theory and distributions course because all of these topics work together. That's what we do in quant finance. We apply uh, model development theories, so statistics, math, and probability using computer science to financial problems. Um, but time series is critical. Uh, I would have a separate class then on stochastic processes, not on option pricing, not on the black shoals, just on stochastic processes as a whole. And many of the models that stem from this, such as Markov chains and different types of Markov models as well, because that is a whole section and a whole class of problems. And having that background in stochastic processes at a very rigorous level um, will allow you to do option pricing if you happen to kind of bounce into that area. Uh, but more specifically, it'll allow you to actually work in all the other areas of quantitative finance um, that actually might use this. The next class would be applied econometrics here. So applied econometrics, meaning that these sorts of models should be project driven. So we've taken stats, time series, sampling theory, uh, and inferential statistics all baked together. These things all somewhat make up econometrics. Uh, I would like to see students actually doing a class building actual models um, and teachers actually using you know some insight here and tearing apart these students' models and using them as examples and seeing where the pitfalls are because in the industry, I have to do that as a manager and a you know head of a department. But getting econometrics from an economics perspective, understanding how these sorts of models work together, applying more of an econ background to these types of models and model development uh, will give you an edge in the industry because that's really what we do on a day-to-day -day basis here. So this should be a really applied hands-on class. Uh, the next class would be financial products here. So I don't see a reason to take a bunch of dumb business finance classes. There should be one class here on financial products. It should cover uh, fixed income products. It should cover equities. It should cover derivatives. It should cover how these products actually operate. We don't need to go into all the nuanced details 
of pricing and we don't need to bring in all these other, I don't know, businessy things on the side here. Just focus on the products. Just explain this to the students so that they can apply the other course material like stats and math uh, to these financial products and understand how they do and don't work. That would be a huge lift uh, for what you see in the industry when students come in and just don't have a background. Like, sure, they took 10 different MBA classes on finance and they have no idea how like a loan works, which is extremely frustrating. Uh, the next class is your risk management, firm structure and models here. So this is only the second class, which is not super quantitatively focused. The first one being the financial products class. Uh, this class should focus on the governance side of the processes of going through model development, going through model validation, understand how you manage risk at a portfolio level as well. So if you're going to be working on the buy side and the investing side, uh, doing things, for example, like value at risk, uh, expected shortfall and all that, but then also looking at other sorts of metrics, model monitoring, OPM, ongoing performance monitoring. Uh, and again, all that structuring behind the scenes as well as model risk management, which is that validation piece here. This class, I think, should be very hands-on and structural. Um, you could also do tie this with your econometrics class and tie them together where you're actually building a model and a product and having the other team do model validation and validate these, you'll learn the processes, you'll see the struggles and the headaches of moving the paperwork and the data between the two. Um, it causes all kinds of stress in the industry here, but being able to actually see this, do this, understand the governance framework sides of these sort of modeling practices uh, will actually improve those going into the buy side because many of those firms just don't have a clue. Uh, the banks do a lot of this, but it's probably way overblown and too many layers and too much nonsense and headaches. But understanding this will actually make your interviewing process for your students easier. Uh, and it'll make me want to hire them more because they already understand the whole process. I don't have to train them from the ground up. Um, so that's a good class I think that should be created that I just don't see a lot of out there. And then finally, uh, one class on machine learning for finance here. Again, basic machine learning for financial applications. Um, you can use simple models. Uh, and then finally, the last class is going to be machine learning for time series specifically here. So really digging deep into the time series piece on a separate course uh, from the traditional just financial problems and modeling problems and machine learning realm. Again, all of it should be applied to finance. And then finally, there is one more class to be a zero credit class, and it would be the career development class. Uh, it would be mandatory. Uh, the students need to learn how to interview, how to write resumes. I am just baffled and shocked at the amount of garbage I see uh, from universities, even top name universities where students have almost the exact same resume. And it's because they teach these classes where instead of teaching the actual fundamentals of writing quality resumes that reflect who you are as a unique individual and what you can bring to a company, uh, they just regurgitate the same nonsensical, I took the same classes as everybody else. Um, and then also here's all these nonsensical projects I've done, which aren't related to my education. So Anyways, that's what I would do. I think these programs need to buckle down. These quant finance programs uh, really focus in on quantitative finance. Stop focusing on financial engineering as a whole. Now, if you want to have a program that is specialized to financial engineering, awesome. But lo really look at placing your students as actual financial engineers, uh, not generalists in quant finance. Quant finance is a huge industry covers buy side, sell side. Uh, it's going to be covering credit market ops, uh, and regulatory risks, which are like the four big categories of this whole spectrum of quantitative finance. There are probably hundreds of jobs available all in the credit space. So mortgage, auto, credit card, all of that. That's just on the credit side. Uh, then you're going to have things, for example, in operational risk. So like, I don't know, what's the probability your firm gets sued? Uh, what's the probability somebody screws up on the trading desk? Uh, using models like loss distribution approach. So LDA, which knows a whole other LDA than other things. Uh, these sorts of things are fascinating. They're interesting. Again, where are the students doing projects on these? Where are the specialties? All those courses I mentioned would prepare you for that. And of course, the fun and exciting market risk here, uh, looking at stocks and fixed income products specifically in portfolios, in the buy side, bringing in a lot of these tools, the econometrics, is going to be critical here. The statistics here, um, these sorts of things can help you really model them out and give you a well-rounded perspective as a student. So I would highly recommend master's programs to listen to this, look at these courses, really consider how they're structuring it. And if you have any questions, any concerns, any comments, uh, put them in the video, or you can just email me personally as well. Uh, you can look at my website at fancyquantnation.com, hit the contact us page, and I will get back to you. So anyways, thank you. And as always, until next time.